Yeah, I have a presentation. And also, I will be sharing my screen because I will be presenting software solutions. So I would like to show how it works and how it works in real practice, not only explanations, but also some real life examples. And I hope to, to not uh, take really long time. So we'll make it in less than one hour, hopefully. And I think we can start now. So our company and the product is called Splinks, and uh, we do billing and uh, the system that is fully designed for ISPs, for wireless internet providers, for fiber internet providers, also for companies that provide voice and uh, manage services. So uh, this is all-in-one solution. And a few words about our company first. Uh, we allocated in Czech Republic, uh, the company is uh, based in Czech Republic. Uh, we have uh, development offices also in Ukraine and uh, support office in uh, South Africa. And also I live uh, in Spain and few of my team members also uh, live in Spain. So today we have uh, around 1,000 ISPs using our platform. And uh, we have 52, to be exact, uh, team members. A majority of them are engineers and uh, developers. So. We also have a few people in the marketing and sales team, but uh, the main team is uh, in development and engineering. Uh, in Australia, we have 130 ISPs so far using our platform. Uh, also, we have uh, companies in uh, New Zealand. And uh, what we do and how do we help to ISPs uh, or to WISPs to succeed is, uh, first of all, we... Uh, bring uh, network uh, administration under control. And as I, as I said, everything is in one platform. So if ISP today uses a few, several platforms for their operations, it can be replaced by one solution. So we work with uh, in uh, uh, billing and collections. Um, we do improve uh, sales operations and, and operations. And then also we work uh, with support. So we have a ticketing platform that I'll be uh, showing today. Uh, so how we, what exactly do we help to improve and what exactly do we help to uh, optimize? First of all, bill customers. So that's what we said uh, by billing and uh, receive the payments. Uh, then build a stable network, uh, support customers, increase sales and improve uh, internal processes. Some of our companies, they, as I said, they use several uh, open source or or uh, commercial software before they switch to Splinks. Other companies, they have their own platforms that they develop for, or they have been developing for years. And uh, then they switch uh, to Splinks because they are just uh, tired of, uh, maintaining this product or this uh, this platform so also we have some companies that switch from other uh, uh competing software platforms uh, because of some reasons and uh, so let me check let me show you first how do we build customers in splinks and how this can be uh, done in an easy way so the risk building is first uh, part of my presentation and so uh, let me, before I go to the next slides, maybe let me share my screen and show you in the real example how we do it. Because we, um, I prefer to not use uh, live data of our customers because we are always under NDA and we cannot share this, but uh, my own data I can share without problem. Now, so this data are of our own company and this is uh, our own platform that we use for our own business. So the splits, can be used for, as I said, for ISPs, SWIFTs, uh, but MSPs and software providers as well. So we use it in our own in our own business, and that's why I can I can show it in real life. Uh, so this is an example of our billing uh, part of the platform. So where we have a financial part, where we see the first when I walk into uh, to the administrative part. This is the administrative part where I get for every part of my platform. I have a dashboard, and then I have some. A menu with uh, uh, sections like this one, as you see, we have a section of customers, section of leads for CRM, then tickets for support. And that's one which is open is a financial section for my billing, where I 
get my dashboard there and there I have all invoices, credit notes, uh, payments, etc. So in my dashboard, I can see in this very nice uh, view what is happening with my recurring revenue. So what, hap what happens with my uh, invoicing in, uh, now and in the uh, previous period. So for example, I can display this way unpaid invoices for my previous uh, periods, like starting from October 2023, if I still have some customers that owe me money. And I see that, for example, for the last month of July, we have 27 unpaid invoices. Uh, then I have also this uh, nice chart shows that shows me what are my uh, payment options and what are um, the payment options that were used by customers to make customers by make, uh, to make payments in the previous months and this month historically. And again, I can compare it by just selecting some of them and see, okay, this is my uh, credit cards and this is my PayPal uh, payments how it develops in in, uh, in period. And then that's my monthly recurring revenue, how it changes like daily, or I can also switch the weekly view on monthly view and uh, what is my average revenue per user. Okay, so for us, it's uh, usually the ISP that pays us for software. For ISPs, it's their subscribers that pay for uh, their services. And uh, it can be, uh, we can analyze based on the locations of partners uh, to understand, okay, in, in one location or in one region, we got higher revenue and there are some plans that are bought by customers more than others. And this is my uh, picture of my de of development of financial situation of my company in, in general. Then, of course, there I have uh, the dashboard view of my uh, daily payments, okay, every month. So, for example, if I choose last month, I see that majority of my customers, because we direct debit on them, so with a... Um, pay us uh, the second day of months. And then I have also some kind of wave uh, people who didn't pay now, but then they pay like 21st or 23rd. So this is uh, just uh, how uh, much money I received during uh, the, this month and previous months. And also I have a list of top payers, top debtors, and that's uh, the view of my overdue invoices, like a kind of aging report on, on the dashboard, zero to 30 days, 30 to 60. and if I want to see this invoices, okay, who didn't pay me uh, in the last 60 days? So I just click there and I'm sent to this invoices menu uh, section, as you see here. So you see that it applied the filter immediately and show me only customers that didn't pay in, in the last uh, 60 days. So if I reset that, it will just show me all invoices that were issued in August. And this is like in any other accounting or similar tool, this is a view of invoices. And also we have the same view of, for uh, payments. So if we have also the list of payments and there are different payment options that we, different payment gateways that we work with. And that's what I will be talking later in a presentation. I'll mention what payment gateways, which payment gateways we uh, support in Australia. Um, we worldwide, we use uh, Stripe as well, main, uh, platform for payments and that's what I can show there under payment statements you can see that we have a uh, brand three PayPal and Stripe there are three platform uh, that we use for uh, receiving payments and uh, I can analyze what is happening there that some errors for example customer has uh, issue with his credit card etc so this information is available here in my uh, billing section and uh, of course if I need to issue a credit note, I also have an option for credit, note, credit notes there. And uh, what is important uh, for uh, business, I think, and we use it as well, is when I do have all this information in my uh, billing platform, I'm also able automatically to synchronize this data with my accounting. We have uh, support of uh, Zero Accounting, Zoffa Accounting, uh, Sage Accounting, and uh, that suit accounting and also um uh what was that one american uh quickbooks quickbooks accounting so these are accounting platforms that we support so it means that we are able to push all data from our platform to accounting platform automatically and uh i can show you this because we use for example zoho books uh in our business so if i open zoho books there and if I go to my sales and invoices, you can see that there are invoices that were pushed 
here in August from Splinks, and there are customers there as well that are there. So for example, I can open this brutal group company and I see that there is a one payment receipt and there is an invoice for that company and uh, for $255. And if I find brutal group here, and see that there is a search, so I can find Brutal Group there. And also you can see that there is a payment and invoice for that customer. So you can see that this uh, data uh, are pushed from Splinks to accounting platform immediately, almost immediately. And uh, that's really saves a lot of time for accounting and uh, accounting department to um, store and push uh, data to, to my uh, accounting and then get all my reports and tax reports and everything in place. So this is done uh, completely automatically. So let me switch back to my presentation. So that was just a quick uh, introduction. Just I tried to show you how uh, simple, how easy it, uh, it is in Splinks. And then if we go there, uh, what is uh, what do we mean by billing? Of course, it's uh, invoices and payments, as I show now in my short uh, live presentation, but of, there are many hidden parts of it that okay, I don't have enough time now to show you all these features and how it works, but we support uh, discounts, refunds, uh, tax, different taxes, uh, reminders. If customer doesn't pay, we can block him and we can redirect him to a special page. Uh, of course, uh, he can make a payment and then he's automatically activated. We can, uh, we can apply some fees uh, late fees or disconnection fees or blocking fees. Uh, then, of course, we can work with cancellations. Uh, and we can also, we do support anniversary billing when customer, for example, uh, starts using his service 21st of uh, August and we bill him every 21st of every month. Or we can do uh, the billing from one day at the first of months. So for example, first of months, we bill all customers till end of month. So the billing engine is really flexible. This is what I wanted to uh, show and to um, explain by this slide. Uh, so the billing customer main goal uh, is simple money collection. Okay, very flexible and simple money connection uh, collection then. Uh, must be legal compliant as it Splinks is, and uh, we support multiple payment options and everything must be automated. So eliminate this manual tedious work when you have to create your invoice and then you forget to create this invoice. So you just put data to Splinks and Splinks immediately starts uh, billing customers with a recurring engine. That's one of examples of how it looks when I need to uh, or flexibly uh, customize the billing of customers. So we have uh, different, this is per customer settings. Okay, by default, it's applied for all clients, but this is also per customer. I can define my uh, payment uh, period. Does this customer pay for one month or for three months, or do I bill him once per half a year? So I can set it up. Uh, what is his billing date, as I said? Is it first of months and I bill him for the whole month, or it's like, 21st, 22nd of months, and then I bill him anniversary every 22nd of months for the period from 21st to 22nd. Then what, what does his payment do when I block him? Okay, this all is uh, configured there under billing settings of uh, each single customer. And uh, important thing, and I think also why we are quite successful in Australia and New Zealand is that we do support local payment gateways. So we have uh, Payrix and uh, Windcave. Uh, Payrix is the platform for Australia that is designed for Australia. And uh, it's a platform that has low fees for uh, direct debits for credit card processing compared to Stripe and to international companies. So all our Australian companies, uh, Australian customers, they use Payrix. Uh, but also we have uh, support of PayPal and Stripe that are international. But the, as I said, the advantage of them is that they are uh, more expensive compared to Perix. The Perix is a local one. And uh, what we can process, we can process credit cards, direct debits, with cash payments, and uh, and bank bank statements as well. So if you have a bank and we need to upload the bank statement to Splint, we are also able to do that. 
to some banks we can even connect. Uh, some banks they provide us with the CSV files that we that we process for uh, get the payment list uh, in the system. And uh, this is what I also shown quickly is integration with accounting platforms. So we do uh, have this kind of integration. So it means that we push from Splinks to accounting platforms all customers. Uh, then we also uh, push all the invoices there and we can also do the uh, bi-directional sync of uh, payments. So for example, uh, zero accounting can have uh, a bank feed that they connect directly to the bank. So we can also get these payments from the accounting. So it means that your accounting processes the payment and we also can get these payments to Splink. So it's a bi-directional sync in this, in this case. It means that, for example, that credit card uh, processed are processed uh, credit card payments are processed directly in space while bank transfers we grab from accounting platform yeah and uh, of course it's what what is needed there is a bit of configuration so as you can see we can uh, we should grab uh, take uh, items and tax rates from the accounting package to set it up all together in splinks to match it but this is done only once and then it just uh, works as a charm and you don't need to touch anything so it's automatically pushes data and, and uh, uh, synchronizes it between two platforms uh, once again the platforms that we support uh, australia and new zealand widely used uh, zero accounting uh, then we have uh, quickbooks uh, used in the united states uh, zoho books uh, internationally netsuit again more United States and Canada and Sage, uh, we use uh, mainly in um, South Africa. So these are um, five accounting platforms that we fully uh, that we are fully integrated with. So one example, uh, our customer from uh, from Australia, Crisp Wireless. What they this is their feedback. So we have we gather always feedbacks from our customers if they are satisfied or not satisfied. Um, this customer is satisfied or was satisfied. And uh, they said that uh, they implemented automated billing and payments and customer suspension. With, and what they got is that three times faster onboarding of customers. So it means because uh, there are a lot of automation and you don't need to store the data between uh, in, in different uh, platforms. So the all onboarding is really, is really faster than so and they say that uh, more efficient support and happier customers, I think also because of uh, uh, modules like ticketing and, and the scheduling. And uh, yeah, this is possibility to customize and automate workflows. So the ticketing platform, the scheduling platform that we'll, I will be showing now also is uh, very flexible. So it means we do not define you uh, the frame or the steps that you have to uh, work with. So you define it yourself. So that's why Splinks maybe is not uh, that uh, easy to uh, configure immediately from scratch, like some platforms that give you a certain pattern of, of how you need to do things. But if you get uh, training from us and understand how the system works, then uh, it's uh, efficient and you really can match Splinks to your existing uh, business processes. And then as the last thing is that exceptional spring support and knowledge sharing, even if we are not in the same time zone as you, but we have uh, support, we have shifts and our engineers, they work in shifts. So we, as you see, as I said, we have 130 customers from your region. It means that we are able to provide uh, support and we are able to respond quickly and uh, resolve if, if there are any issues. Um, so then the next section is if I, First of all, I explained the billing, but also uh, the network for ISP is important. So I'm originally a networking engineer and uh, part of my team are networking engineers and we uh, do work uh, with networks and we like it. So we also help to some of our customers to optimize their networks to design, like to implement some uh, dynamic routing protocols. Uh, implement some firewalling, etc. But it's out of scope of Splinks. We just do it because it's our uh, passion. And uh, of course, in Splinks, we also brought uh, plenty of these uh, things in, in terms of automation and uh, in central management. So network management tools that we have in Splinks, what are the main goals that we want to achieve by, in, by bringing this uh, automation to 
uh, to our platform is to have a stable network because if I, I we believe that if we centrally manage the network, it's uh, much easier than to fix it to find what is going on and to uh, to to achieve a stable network as a result. Uh, then uh, some automatic automated authentication radio server is one of our main parts of, of, of the platform. So it means that all your customers, they are centrally authenticated and then blocked and unblocked if it's needed. Uh, alerts and backups uh, and quick launch of customers. So this is all what we want to achieve by um, automating uh, things and, and bringing some networking tools. Uh, what networking tools I'm talking about, and this is radio server as i said the first and the major part of splinks is not the radio server it's our own radio server we can customize it it's very flexible it supports all possible equipment uh, that uh, has radio support and technology that uh, it supports uh, pppoe ipoe we have even uh, switches uh, cisco switches support and uh, uh, Microtik. So anything that works with radio server, we can work with. Um, of course, what we can do with radios, basically speed limitation, automatic blocking of clients, uh, get statistics of usage and customer authentication. But also we work with APIs. So if there is a vendor that you want to connect to, uh, like a Huawei OLT, uh, then it can be uh, like a shaper, like this uh, pre seen uh, quality of experience platform. Uh, it can be also some secure DNS platform or uh, MicroTik routers. We can communicate with these platforms uh, using API. And we we also have API, so any third-party vendor also can connect those things uh, by API just developing and creating the module, module to our platform. Uh, then we have also ACS, which is a TR69. That means it's a central management of CPU devices, so small uh, it can be home routers, it can be wireless routers, point-to-point um, -point routers, anything that supports uh, TR69 provisioning, and it helps us to um, remotely manage this equipment, uh, monitor, um, send updates. For example, I have, I don't know, 100, 300 uh, routers uh, of CP devices connected in my network, and I want to update them. Uh, in one in one day, let's say all of them, and I don't have to go to open to log into every of this router and run the update. So I just select them in strings, uh, upload the firmware, and send it there, and it updates all the routers. Or I schedule this update for uh, for night. Uh, so that's that's the ACS what it's about. Uh, then we have IP management, of course, IPv4, IPv6, and uh, monitoring and backups. So we have also we can. Uh, backup equipment and backup uh, uh, configuration of equipment like SNMP ping, uh, SSH, and then we have supports for money, uh, support of technologies like SNMP and ping for monitoring. Um, next is the new feature that we have recently added. It's still not in the public release, but that will be available in September is uh, network sites. So I have a tower or towers, and I need to uh, store information about each uh, single tower. So what is, who are the contact details when I need to access this, this tower? Uh, what are my uh, access points installed installed there? Or it can be uh, just the point of presence where I have my uh, rack with, uh, with equipment, with my fiber equipment. So all this data is stored in Splinks there. This is a new model that we recently developed. Um, just provides me information about uh, what customers are connected to this tower or to this uh, location. Also, I can send mass messages. For example, the tower, uh, we are going to make some maintenance on this tower and I can send mass messages to all my customers connected uh, to this point. Uh, again, one feedback from company IP Telco uh, saying that what was the problem that they were looking for uh, a radius that is scalable and uh, they, selected Splinks and they started using Splinks because it was easy to work with and uh, very responsive to tickets. It means that we try, as, as I said, uh, we have now 12 people working in our support department and shifts. So, and we track uh, the response time and we always try to, we have uh, like an internal company SLA uh, to answer the tickets uh, quickly. So in one hour, we try to answer the ticket if we can. Uh, 
if we cannot and we are, for example, overall that's all still in one uh, working day, we always ask for our tickets and try to resolve uh, resolve the case. Uh, basically, all support is related or majority of support uh, queries are, are coming from new customers that when they start working with Splinks and uh, learning it. And uh, this is the majority of, of our tickets and questions that we receive from customers. We, we do provide uh, training and we do provide also uh, Zoom calls to explain how the system works. But as the system is uh, enormous, let's say it has plenty of features, uh, a lot of uh, different areas. So still people can uh, fight with some of these features and say, okay, okay, how this work? Can you explain it to me? And this, I, I'm not, I'm not sure if, if I'm doing it correctly. So this is, let's say, majority of the tickets that we have because uh, the platform is by itself is really stable. So it doesn't uh, fall, it doesn't break. So this, this is majority of the things that we deal with, but it's, uh, we, we do have quite a lot of these questions every day because there are, as I said, there are 1000 ISPs using our platform and we onboard a lot, around 10, 15 new customers every month. Uh, yeah, the results from working with us is that uh, our customer is saying that Splinks has changed the way how they do business because uh, it allows them easily and quickly provision new customers, delegate new IPs, apply shaping and uh, get the statistics. And so they use also our API so they, they can uh, they can uh, use it for, ex uh, for extension of for what Splinks uh, brings. Um, then support customers. So I can also show you quickly what do we mean by support. Support is um, we we before we started to use using Splinks for our uh, own business. We used Freshdesk, and uh, you know the Freshdesk Zendesk is a special platforms for support. So we used it as well. But then one day I think like around five years ago we decided to uh, if we develop this platform we think that it can't have all the things that Freshdesk has and I, we don't need to pay for extra software. And also Freshdesk had limitation is in customization. So the things that we wanted to, to do, and this is just an example, uh, how one of our providers, one, one of our uh, customers, internet provider set up their own um, statuses and they work with own statuses. So this is the amount of tickets that they get. As you see that some of them are engineer business schedule, some of them are uh, business or VIP and uh, sign off required, uh, no waiting on customers. So these are all the statuses that each ISP can configure for themselves. Okay. So, and I will show you now the live presentation of how we do it. And if I go there to tickets and I click dashboard there, as you can see that I have completely different statuses in my platform because we are not an ISP. So we don't need to visit the customer and make an installation or remove an equipment. But instead of it, we have in development because some customers require something and we say, okay, that will be in the next release or this will be in the current release. And you can see that there are 68 tickets that customers require something or ask us to develop. And we say, yes, it is planned, but it will be in the one of the next releases. And 13 tickets, is about the features that are going will be launched and now in the next release. Also, I can see that there is a waiting on agent, agent 29 tickets there, work in progress. And so then if I scroll down, I see this is the amount of tickets that we receive every day. So if I just show the new tickets, I see that yesterday we got 75 tickets. It means, what, what is a ticket? Ticket is an email. So it can be an email. So when someone sends us email to support at splings.com, it immediately creates a ticket. So it's also for uh, for WISP, it's, it works the same way. So you have uh, your uh, ticketing uh, email or support email. So when people send the email there, it creates a ticket. It also can ha handle and work with different emails, incoming emails, you can set up that, okay, if the question is related to billing and the customer says, okay, what, why invoice is incorrect? So he sends email to billing at uh, your domain.com. And then if it's related to new connection or to any kind of complaint, it can send to another email. So this uh, multiple email boxes are supported in Splinks and we automatically parse this email, we automatically connect to the mailbox and uh, create a ticket from this email. And of course, administrator can do, can create a ticket himself. Customer can create a ticket himself from customer portal. Okay, but let's say majority of these tickets in our business, but also in 
um, many of our, our clients, they are created by emails that customers send them. We are launching WhatsApp integration in September. So also it will allow us to store tickets that were created from WhatsApp conversation. Okay, so that's uh, this is a new feature that is uh, quite big and we have been developing it for a year. And that will be, I think that will be used uh, really a lot because we had so many uh, requests from our customers and maybe just except of uh, uh, United States because they don't use WhatsApp that much, but all other places, all other countries, they <laughs> requested WhatsApp uh, integration. And uh, how this ticket looks, like if I open... Um, one of these tickets is, uh, for example, there. You can see that there is a customer asking some question and then a support engineer answering this question. And then if, uh, for example, there is also automation follow. If we do not receive the answer from customer, we close uh, the ticket automatically after after one week. So there is plenty, as, I, as I'm saying, I'm not explaining all the configuration options. I just want to uh, show briefly how how it works and what it has, because uh, there's plenty of automation things. So I can uh, also define my teams who will be in shifts and who will be uh, answering tickets in a certain uh, time period, or who will be, uh, or who, the tickets that will be assigned to this team. I can also do uh, define some automation for us as this example. For example, if we customer doesn't uh, answer, it will be uh, called or it will send the email to customer saying, can you please, double check what is uh, we are waiting on your side. And uh, if I open their customer profile, I can also see that on the customer profile here where invoices and his billing, but if I go back to the information section, I can see that there is a list of tickets and all history uh, of our communication with him. And uh, we are able to store not only the tickets, but also the communication, like an email communication, all uh, messages that we sent uh, to customer, all phone calls that we do to customer and customer when they phone us, um, us back, we also can store under his communication uh, tab. So we want to be a single platform for having this main company information. So kind of a, a CRM and a main uh, ERP platform for, for providers. Because that's why we store all this data there as well. So let me switch back to my presentation there. Um, so regarding uh, support, as we said, the same thing is shown there on my presentation, all information in one place, uh, support ticketing system, other things that also help to subscribers of ISP uh, to get uh, to get uh, support and uh, make them some, some things uh, themselves is uh, self-service options and uh, some remote management. What, what do I mean by this? And that's what I will switch to the next slide because this is related to tickets. As I said, plenty of uh, things that we have, mailbox, uh, canned replies, automation calls, and uh, flexibility. Uh, but that's what I'm talking about is a customer portal. So you as uh, ISP, you have uh, uh, subscribers. So that to these subscribers, you provide uh, customer portal access. So what I'm showing you now in live presentation is the administrative access, but we also have uh, the uh, access for our customers, uh, for uh, like the customer portal. And uh, each ISP has own customer portal. And we also do provide mobile app. So a mobile app that looks very similar to the customer portal, but the customer can uh, make a payment and get all data, statistics, uh, information about his uh, account in, in the mobile app. Uh, and there in this customer portal, we do provide options for self-service management. Like for example, customer can pause uh, his service and uh, then he can start it back if we allow it. Uh, he can change service, upgrade, downgrade, uh, update his password. Uh, also, we do support if TR69 is used, he can change his Wi-Fi password. He can change his Wi-Fi SSID without touching, uh, touching the router. And uh, a self-ordering, so if we so, okay, you can order the public IP or you can order some voice service or you can order, um, I know, host, hosting, you can do it from your portal. You don't need to call us and explain what you want. Just log into a portal, click there, 
and the service will be immediately ordered. Uh, the ticket will be created that the new service was ordered and uh, there will be immediately his uh, recurring billing adjusted uh, according to his new order. Uh, and that's uh, what I mentioned uh, regarding our uh, TR69 is uh, ACS uh, platform is that uh, according to statistics, uh, majority or many of cases are related to Wi-Fi issues uh, at uh, customer premise. So it means 25% uh, of Wi-Fi coverage and then there is a 2.44 gigahertz congestions and uh, mesh placements, etc. So even if we bring fiber to customer network, so he places his router incorrectly and now he starts complaining. And what he does, of course, he calls his ISP saying, my internet is not working. And now, and, and, and now someone needs to figure out what is going on and why it's not working. But in many cases, it's just the uh, bad Wi-Fi settings. And uh, with uh, this TR69 ACS, we can get some basic data from customer CP immediately. It's a kind of, okay, what uh, frequency and channel he is using, uh, what is his SSID, what is his uh, signal, and uh, uh, active customers or connected to this uh, Wi-Fi device. And also we can do some ping, trace route, uh, download upload to check if the link is also working fine. So this kind of basic troubleshooting uh, we can do using uh, ACS platform. And uh, I can tell you that all of the big players and this all operators, they do this so they do not log into uh, and uh, user device and you know, do not do anything there. So they have all centrally managed because they have millions or thousands and thousands of uh, CPU devices. And if customer calls them, they can remotely uh, check if, or they can also systems that they click buttons and they say, okay, Wi-Fi is fine. Connection is fine. There is no issue with, with this. Or yes, there is an issue, we can fix it, we can change it, so replace equipment or whatever. Uh, so we also bring this option to um, smaller and medium-sized ISPs because as I mm, mentioned, as our goal is to help this uh, local ISPs to succeed in uh, the competition with, with large operators, which is not easy at all. Uh, one example is infinite broadband. Uh, they say uh, we were a startup and we were looking for a product that manage would manage everything. And uh, they say that uh, they selected Splinks and we supported uh, the deployment and uh, integration. And as a result, they have a fully functional supported backend system driving ISP that they don't have to spend time developing and updating. Um, so it's, here we can see that this is a, like it was a startup company. We work with uh, companies with, of different sizes. Some of our companies, they just start their business. And of course, it's the uh, right time to choose the platform that will help them. Uh, other companies, they work uh, for a long time without Splinks, like for eight years, 10 years. And then they say, oh, but we are not happy with what we have as we have many platforms. So this commercial platform is not reliable or our own platform we don't like. So that, and they also switch to Splinks and, and they can be quite big because the biggest, uh, the largest Splinks uh, operator or customer is has uh, 150,000 uh, subscribers. Uh, then we have also companies with 50,000, 30,000 subscribers. Majority of our clients are uh, companies with uh, two, three, four thousand 4,000 subscribers. And of course, um, we, are, we have many small companies that just started and they have a few hundreds of, of subscribers, but they grow. And that's what really we like to see that they, they, they grow and they start from 100 and then they grow to a few thousand, which is really, really nice to see this business uh, cases and success and, and be part of it. Um, then important part of, is of course, uh, increase the sales. Uh, as I said, if we do everything, why we cannot do CRM, of course we can, and that's what we do. So we can track leads. And as, it, as I shown, uh, previously there, we have customers where I open my customer and this is the customer view, but also I have, uh, customers who are not paying me yet. So it means like potential customers and we call them leads or opportunities. And in this lease, it's very similar view to what we have there and uh, in, in customers, but we do not have any billing there. And as you see, it looks really uh, different. So it's, um, it has uh, this, uh, 
um, pipeline. So we define also pipelines. I can create the documents. I can send a quote to customer. Uh, he can sign the contract. So everything is managed from one place. And also my communication with customer is uh, tracked there. So as you can see, I have my email connected. So there is an email that we can connect that is uh, used for tickets, but also I can connect my business email using IMAP. So, and all my communication with customer is just stored in one place. Uh, as I said, we also have uh, integration with the phone. Uh, this one, is, as you can see, this is the password outgoing call. So I can open that and this, I can listen to the call. And this is the call uh, that was made using 3CX platform. So we have connection or interconnection with a 3CX platform. So it means that all incoming calls that come to your company from customers and the, or outgoing calls that your sales and support team does uh, can be stored in one platform. And as I said, now we are bringing also WhatsApp. So all WhatsApp communication will be also stored there in the one platform. Uh, that's This is the CRM. Uh, so as we said, comprehensive CRM, uh, quick sign-up process. We help to ISPs to uh, use their sign-up form and connect it to Splings. So you have your own sign-up form that is already designed as a part of your website. You can connect it easily to Splings and customer uh, leaves his contact details and he wants to connect. Uh, it can be also connected to the coverage map. So customer sees, okay, I'm there in this area. I can get a service. So he fills in the form and this immediate information appears in splings. It can appear in the customer section or in lead section. It depends on the, how we design it. And uh, then I said communication channels. So WhatsApp will be, uh, will be um, developed or introduced to, uh, Soon, and then um, all the other things like email and phone calls. Um, yeah, this is an example of 3 six integration. So I have a 3 six app on my phone. When I make a call, immediately everything is tracked. So if someone calls me to my uh, business phone number, also uh, it recognizes, I see who is my customer, even if I do not have it in my phone, but I have it in Spring. So I say, okay, this is my customer from the US calling me, answer this phone and every communication is stored centrally in Splings. Uh, we'll be probably bringing more integrations, but so far as we made, uh, we sent an email asking customers, what is your preferred uh, communication platform? And majority of them voted for 3CX. So that's why we added 3CX. Uh, maybe there will be more platforms also added uh, um, in the future to, to this uh, communication. It's not, it's not difficult, actually. What we need is just to grab, uh, to, to store uh, the phone calls and the history. Um, so this is a kind of example of okay website form uh, that can be, this is our default website form but that can be used, but uh, many of our clients, they prefer to use their own. So they have an HTML uh, coder that does the work and then they connect it to, to Splinks and we can help with that. It can be connected by our API and we can even also deliver this form, form design or form uh, to the website. Uh, yeah. Share and sign contracts at time springs. So we have a, a option to uh, sign the contract. You prefer it can be contract. It can be anything that you, customer needs to sign, and you send it to him, and he signs it. That is, it's stored under his uh, profile. And uh, yes, you can also provide additional services like hotspot. Uh, some of our customers they do have uh, fiber networks uh, or uh, fixed wireless, uh, but also they have some areas where they provide hotspot. So it can be like a public hotspot uh, that is free. Uh, it can be hotspot, uh, Wi-Fi hotspot that is paid. Uh, it can be, we also have some big hotspot networks for mining companies and all that, uh, et cetera. And uh, mm, for hotspot, we have a special product that is called PowerLinks. So it's not Splings, but it's also our product that is designed uh, just for a hotspot. And if you will need uh, the hotspot solution, you can look at this, it's the powerlink.app. Um, if I open the web page there, it's also the same company does it, powerlinks. And there is a Wi-Fi hotspot. So it's like, as you know, the splash page when you open, if you visit, I don't know, McDonald's or KFC, and then you connect there to their Wi-Fi, there is a splash page appears. And they it's free, but it can be paid, so we can receive the payment. And uh, um, uh, we can support uh, thousands and thousands of customers in this solution. Because as I said, 
a uh, few or some of our customers they are really big with uh, hundreds of thousands of people connecting using using hotspots uh, in New Zealand uh, for example we have a company that now uh, has hotspot for uh, the camping areas you know, the camping when customer when people come to camp uh, the camping they have a hotspot Wi-Fi network so they their guests can access this network, so they pay for uh, one month subscription on a prepay, and they get uh, Wi-Fi internet. So this is one of an example of how this hotspot can be used. Uh, and yeah, also with Splings, some value-added services can be uh, added or uh, provided to subscribers. One of them is a security service. So, for example, we have also integration with. Uh, security platform that is called Wellbone, and uh, this is uh, security DNS. So, for example, ISP has a company uh, has a, a customer who needs uh, security, some kind of security in his uh, on his line of his internet, and to, with this Wellbone DNS, uh, he is able to provide it. And it's based on the DNS, but it uh, tracks and uh, prevents all the malware and uh, uh, bad traffic in the network. And uh, Splinks is integrated with uh, this platform, so we essentially in the in the system we can see all the threats and and uh, what happens in the in the network of a particular customer. So one option again with working with Splinks, the Primo Wireless is um, our customer from New Zealand, and again they claim that three times faster. Uh, they achieved uh, the customer onboarding. So it means the new customer comes to a company and you can, because of all these uh, systems uh, that work together or it's one, in one system, all the processes are optimized. You can, you can onboard him uh, faster and he can get uh, a connection uh, much quicker than previously. Uh, before Springs, they used uh, multiple platforms as manual entries. And it was time-consuming duplication of efforts between several platforms, no flexibility, and uh, there were some obstacles with uh, scalability of the platforms with Splings, as they put everything under one roof. More efficient customer support and possibility to customize and automate workflows. Uh, and this company is quite big, so they are not small, and they are one of uh, let's say leaders of uh, wireless market in New Zealand. Uh, and. Uh, Again, the, the last uh, part is improve internal processes in general. This is what we can help with. Um, managing resources, uh, inventory management, I haven't uh, mentioned, but we also have inventory management that is also connected to uh, scheduling. And this is scheduling is actually managing resources efficiently. So this is a task management uh, app for installers. That's all we have, uh, calendars, uh, planning. So this all we also have in Splinks. It's part of our... Uh, our platform. So this is an example of a calendar. So as you can see, my uh, workers there in stores, there is a calendar view where I plan uh, the tasks. On the right side, I have my uh, tasks, uh, 29 tasks that I need to plan for this week. And then I just go through calendars of my employees, of my team members, and I schedule the work for them. Uh, then this is the view of uh, inventory because I need also to plan, okay, this is my equipment. I will install it to customer A, customer B, and this is all connected together. So if someone goes there and install a customer immediately, he assigns um, items in, in, inside of the inventory uh, to the customer. Uh, there is a barcode reader, so I don't need to find what is my uh, ID of my equipment. I, I just uh, easily scan the barcode. And uh, plenty of reports we have in Splinks. So tax reports, uh, agents, uh, financial logs. So reporting is important, and we work, we work on it every version, and every version we bring some new report or we optimize existing reports. Uh, one more uh, case study, Wireless Nation, one of our biggest customers in terms of uh, things that we did for them, uh, but they are also... Um, Quite, quite big in New Zealand. Uh, I think they are also one of uh, successful or most successful New Zealand companies. Uh, and I think last year they were awarded the best wireless internet provider in New Zealand. And we were part of it because they have been working with us for five, six years already. Uh, what was their uh, goal is they had all developers in team when they started business on 10, 12 years ago, uh, they had own developers and these developers, they 
created their own platform according to their needs. Uh, but in one day, it became too uh, difficult to maintain uh, the version. And I think developer one developer, developer left. So they had this uh, issues with uh, maintaining this uh, self-made platform. And that's why they started to look for alternatives for commercial platforms. And uh, yeah, they have over 10,000 subscribers. And uh, as a result, they got 40% uh, of cost savings compared to what they pay to developer or developers. Now they pay uh, less uh, when they pay us for Spring subscription, but they don't need to think about uh, what will happen uh, when we grow, what will happen uh, if the technology changes and we need to update our platform. So everything uh, we do instead of uh, in-house development. And so, so we enabled growth, uh, so they had better access to R&D. And so uh, this is interesting that they had around 25 customizations. So Splinks is very flexible and we also are able to customize it. So if customer, if our uh, customer comes and says, okay, guys, I do the business this way and I have some things that I use for myself. Or for example, like I have this, um, email mail jet for sending emails uh, to promote my services to customers. I have the CRM that I use. We are also able to connect our platform to this and make this customizations and uh, connect them to third party apps. So this is what is, what, what we did uh, for Wireless Nation was over 25 customizations. So that's why I'm saying it's uh, the biggest company because they have uh, plenty of modules and their server is really uh, powerful and uh, it does a lot of things and also so plenty of things that uh, other customers are not using for example uh, I haven't mentioned but we have also connection to voice over IP uh, platforms we can get the CDRs we can process the CDRs we can get rated CDRs and uh, display to customer already his um, one invoice with uh, several lines for internet services and for voice services so we are able to uh, work with voice uh, wireless station is one of examples. I think that they have three or four different uh, voice providers and voice platforms. So it's a mobile, it's also voice over IP. So all these uh, platforms are connected to Springs and Springs automatically downloads uh, the CDRs, uh, the call recordings, uh, the call, uh, the history of calls, I mean, and uh, uh, applies rating somewhere, somewhere it's already rated and uh, just saves it all in one in one place. Yes, and so that's all. So I made it in one one hour exactly. And so Springs is our main product. Uh, Powerlinks is a, a hotspot product. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, write me to alex at springs.com or if you write info at springs.com, it will create a ticket as I shown. Uh, the website springs.com and Powerlinks app uh, is another website. And so uh, let's work together to achieve uh, success. So we are open for communication for any questions and I will stop sharing. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. And we are also recording it. So people who 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 is who will be watching it, uh, you can also ask me questions on my email. Any questions, guys? Uh, Alex, I was just wondering in your um you billing platforms, do you uh, allow to do quotes, sort of proposals to customers? Because often a service goes with a lot of hardware from our point of view. Yes, yes. Uh, it's part of the CRM section or it's, uh, it, the call can be created for a lead or can be created for existing customer as well. Yeah, and the quote also can be accepted. So there is a the quote is sent to customer and he can click the button, accept the quote, and then you see it comes back as accepted and you can track, okay, that this customer is happy with uh, what we offered him. Yeah, the quote, and also this quote can be, uh, the template for the quote is, uh, you can customize. You can say, okay, there is a default quote to you that we have, but you can say, I don't like that. Can we change it a bit? Uh, put our logo, of course, this all things customizations are part of the system. Yes. I had, a, I had a quick question about your inventory management and backup there. So that looked quite interesting. Uh, so with your yeah. management, you know, I've just seen the thing about the towers as well. Um, so you're saying basically if you're full network, you can basically back up the the 
the four network and also um, obviously have it have that all in your system as well and to all your towers and stuff noted as well is that right yes 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 this is this is the thing that uh, i try to promote because it's uh a bit hidden and and because you know the platform is as i said is, is huge so it has so many things and there are platforms that are dedicated only for backup solution while we have it already in the platform so it means that our customers can use it so we use ssh for accessing the backup configuration so if you enable ssh for uh, mainly it's used by uh, our customers for saving configurations of uh, their core equipment like uh, micro yeah, routers or routers and powers uh, switches as well some Cisco devices some, something that just everything what has access to SSH so it stores the uh, configuration I think I even have there uh, yeah there is if I can share my screen again I will show you and I just did uh, this backup recently to for one customer so you can see this is the full backup the mm -hmm. file that I just downloaded, but also in the Splinks, I can see if I open uh, this uh, backup uh, file, it shows me the recent changes. So if there were changes in the configuration, it will also show me the changes that was added, and there will be several options to get the previous back oh, backup that is the last one or the backup previous before I applied some changes there. And the backup basically is, uh, I can set up also if I do it every day, if I do it once a week, uh, if I do it so like twice a day, whatever. So, but yeah, very uh, useful feature that I personally like. Uh, many people don't know that we have it, <laughs> but but uh, in this year I was promoting it and and pushing our customers to start using it. I said, guys, it's there for for a few years as we don't promote it because we have so many other things. But this is very useful. Use it. Yeah, it's quite good. I like the inventory management. We use Netbox at the moment, which but again, it sort of adds that whole different systems type scenario you're talking about to have it all integrated yes yeah. but yeah yeah well yeah netbox also has I ipim so ip ip address management that we also have on spring so okay. instead of yeah how, how do you structure your subscriptions and what's included with your subscriptions um the subscription includes uh all the features that i mentioned and uh the pricing if you if we it's uh, based on the amount of customers in the network. And uh, so it starts on a half of dollar per subscriber. If I go to splings.com and if you type their pricing and uh, if I type 1000 subscribers there, so you can see that the price is 620, which is 62 US dollar cents per subscriber. Uh, when I grow and I have more customers there, then this price drops to half a door and even less per subscriber. And uh, included is, okay, we do uh, include support and uh, communication over tickets. And also we help during the integration, uh, the first uh, three months of uh, working with Splings, uh, making calls. And also we help with importing data from uh, previous platforms um, to Splings. Uh, we do all the software updates uh, and that's always included a uh, mobile app so all features that i've shown are also included the only thing that we charge uh, a part is uh, that uh, tr69 but it's also very affordable so for example for 1000 devices we charge 100 us dollars monthly that makes it uh, 10 cents per one device which uh, if you compare to like uh, dedicated ACS platforms, I think it's like 10% of what they do charge. Okay, so that's, uh, but all other things are included. It's only the, only the ACS is something what we charge uh, additionally. Uh, all other things that ticketing, uh, scheduling, uh, billing, uh, connection to accounting, all the things are included in Splink subscription and there is no modules that we just uh, charge additionally. Uh, and the price is, uh, uh, this price works uh, for all countries where we operate. So we try to find the best uh, price uh, that will work for all uh, areas where we work. And uh, we have many customers in, in African region, in, in Europe, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, uh, United States as well. So I think this, this price 
can be higher can be higher if I see some some American uh, uh, com competitors. But uh, this is the price that uh, we are happy with, and we can provide uh, uh, high level service for that. I did a quick calc for you, Alan. So it looks about uh, ninety two cents per customer. What it works out to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where's your where are your servers based, Alex? I know you're uh, in Czech Republic. Yeah. yeah, Czech Czech Republic is uh, is the headquarter, oh, and uh, as I, as I said, uh, Czech Republic is the headquarter. Uh, our development part of our development team is located in Ukraine. Uh, part of them we moved out to Spain and to Czech Republic, and also we have support engineers in uh, South Africa. So this four countries were spread in, in four countries, but the headquarter is in Czech Republic, and uh, uh, we have a legal entity in Emirates also. So it's uh, that's just a business entity. So we do not have people there. I, I, I just wanted to clarify that to your Splink server. Can it be run on premises or is it actually a cloud based? Yes, mm, we. We prefer to install it in, in cloud because it's a really reliable way, way of uh, where we, we can have when we run Splinks. I mean, it's it's not uh, only cloud. If our customers say, okay, we have our own infrastructure that we run, VMware, you know, any of these virtualization platforms, and we have this cluster at, uh, in our data center, they can, they can host it themselves. Okay, it's on uh, by default. Well, I, uh, it was designed as on premise, but what we saw that for small ISPs that do not have own infrastructure, it's better to host it in cloud, like uh, Amazon or Digital Ocean. So we just put it there. And uh, but uh, some bigger ISPs that they have own infrastructure, they host it there. They prefer to have it in house because data do not leave uh, hmm. to public internet, you know, and everything is in, uh, inside of their private network. And if you do the radio, so it's very good and at ACS, everything works in your private, uh, private ranges, uh, without leaving your network. Yeah, so both like options <laughs> are possible. Yeah. Both, possible. both options are possible. Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. Um, Alan, do you have another one or go tip tap for you if you like? I think uh, you're up. <laughs> Again, okay. Well, um, one think... for you if you want, oh, Adrian, because yeah? okay. um, I run Splinks already. Um, okay, okay. I'm running it on premises. Yeah. Um, one thing you might want to check because previously I used to run cloud hosted uh, with Sonar before, but when I changed, because uh, I've been in the game for long enough that I was around when the data retention. Uh, yes. implementation came in yes. so yes. yeah just make sure you've <laughs> got your around? I have no idea <laughs> I need to go back and look but um, if you're running on cloud you just want to keep your backups exported and, yes. and secured back back locally otherwise yeah I just I just keep mine backed up locally and yeah yeah no I like the I like the idea of on-prem I, I did have another question. Um, I was interested in your, you've mentioned your ACS, your TR69. So I'm, I'm, whilst I'm talking to you, I'm also having a quick look at your pricing. It looks like it's a little addition, uh, a little add on. So, but that ACS, um, is it specific routers that you're sort of connecting with there? It looks like mainly Mecrotech, but is it any particular CPE that you you can use? Mm, no, you can use any anyone that supports uh, TR69. Uh, just some of them has have uh, limited support of it. You know, the, for example, Mikrotik is uh, has really great implementation of TR69 there, so you can get plenty of uh, data from there, and it's really quick. So if you click the button there, it immediately applies every change, everything. While others, it depends. You know, Zyxel works quite well. TP-Link we also tested uh, works depends on the on the version. And uh, some Chinese vendors do not work well. Some cheap equipment, you know, but some something that is like uh, a bit more serious. Some really this uh, big vendors, so they do they do support it well. And we we use uh, the actually we we do not run and we do not develop the backend because it's a lot of work, you know, to just to 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 support all the vendors. We use the Jenny ACS, which is open source platform. So we put it to Splinks as a backend. And what we did and what we charge for is a connection of this backend to our 
splings and the front end. So in the splings where you can see and uh, apply all the actions and work with it. Because Genie ACS, you can use Genie ACS without splings at all, you know, so and even in, on the same server when we install it, but uh, they do not, as it's open source, it's more uh, the backend application. So their uh, way of configuring things and working with it is really mm, not not that good, you know, so in terms of usability. So for really advanced network engineers that have plenty of time, that, that's good to say they can use it, they can work with their template, they can use uh, their uh, UI, but for, uh, like a regular ISP that doesn't have that many that that much time you know, spending on learning these things, uh, splings can can be ideal because we did it just in one with the same UI that's uh, that's uh, you are used to work with. So there is also in the same UI this all buttons and everything, so you understand what is going on, clicking, clicking, and uh, provisioning or checking on restarting or updating. Everything is very. Uh, easy to use, and that's why we we charge for it. So for this uh, front end of of this uh, platform, let's say, but the back end and the ACS, how it connects to devices, how it uh, reads all the attributes. This is an open source project that is supported by community and uh, it runs, and uh, anyone can use it without splings. Mm. It's I think your numbers are about right. We we find that most of our customer issues are related to Wi-Fi coverage or or two using two point four gigahertz. So yeah, that ability to <laughs> to hone in on that without having to roll out and see the customers quite good. So, Can you detect microwave ovens? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> putting it next to them. We've had that too. We had a guy ring us up, always complaining that his Netflix always just seemed to drop out when he was doing his popcorn. So he said, buy a new microwave. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. what the problem was. Get a five gigahertz microwave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Any other questions, guys? Any questions? No. That's it. All right. That was very interesting. Yes, thanks for that. That was uh, that was excellent. So, as I said, we've recorded this, so we'll send this all out to our members. So, thanks again for the time today. I think that was a, a really good presentation. Very interesting. So, we'll make sure um, we send that out, and if we get any members that have got any questions, we'll we'll forward them on to you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very it was much. A pleasure presenting. Seeing you. <laughs> no problems. Thanks. And if yeah, anyone's got any specific questions about. Australia or any of the stuff that I'm running. Yeah, I'm running as well. So let me know. Might be a trip John, <laughs> He's in parks. Oh, <laughs> yeah. How do you, you, oh, you obviously find it pretty good, John, obviously. Yeah, yeah. There's still a bunch of stuff that's, uh, that I don't use in there that, um, yeah, this is all just a reminder to go back and implement some more things. But, um, yeah, <laughs> provisioning flow is really good for the TR069. Like if we sell a customer a device... Um, when that shows up on the network, it links the serial number. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, auto-provisions all the PPP details and drops it into the client's um, customer portal. And, yeah, they can they can make changes to their router through their portal. That is very cool. That is yeah. very cool. Yeah, cool. I hope you're doing inventory and backup, John. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> doing inventory. The backup, I still have another platform with a uh, subscription on it. But, yeah. <laughs> Add that one to the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh we we've um we've learned the hard way to make sure always keep your backups up to date. So. Oh yeah, no, that's a definite that one. No, uh, that's a good a good little add on that one. All right, guys. Uh thanks again. Um that's pretty much the meeting done. We've hit our time limit. So thanks everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.